Hello and welcome to this podcast. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Eva Shimon from the Civil Liberties Union for Europe, or Liberties in short. Liberties is a Berlin-based EU watchdog organization and Eva is their senior advocacy officer. She is a human rights lawyer with a special focus on digital rights, including issues related to freedom of expression and data protection. Besides her advocacy work at EU level, Eva does uh, strategic litigation across EU member states. She has been active in human rights for more than 15 years and was a media lawyer and researcher prior to that. She is also the author of expert studies, book chapters and articles on privacy and media freedom. So basically a very busy bee defending our fundamental rights. Okay, Eva, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and one soapbox moment at the end. So let me start with putting question one on the screen uh, and reading it to you. And that is, what does protecting media freedom mean to you? Thank you so much for having me today. So answering your first question, uh, media freedom, is a fundamental pillar of democracy. So it ensures the free flow of information and ensures that we can hold any form of power, be it government or business to account. Free media also plays an important role in society in sharing public interest information and to ensure that people can participate in public discussions and make, in, make informed uh, decisions, especially when they cast their votes. Therefore, international human rights instruments require states to refrain from restricting the media freedom uh, and also support a legal environment to safeguard free and diverse media landscape. For example, the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU expressly states that the, freedom and uh, that the freedom and pluralism of media shall be respected. So on one hand, media freedom creates a negative obligation where states must refrain from imposing undue restrictions, but on the other hand, there are positive obligations as well. So for example, to protect journalists and ensure that diverse media market can exist. Um, so media around the world has been changed recently besides audiovisual media services such as broadcasted radio and television and also print and online media there is social media platforms and they have emerged and taken an important position in content distribution so as media has changed the understanding of media freedom and the protection of media freedom is changing Media freedom is not only limited to forms of media, though, but it also means that editors and journalists can work safely and independently from those who hold power. And who are they? They are not only governments or political parties anymore, but also publishers and influential business partners and advertisers. So protecting media freedom, to me, means a bit more than it was maybe 10 or 20 years ago, because we have a changing media environment and we have to address all these issues that are coming up recently. Okay, so what you are describing is basically a more complex environment that requires more complex solutions probably and more ambitious solutions. Um, and I think that ties in nicely into the second question, which is, what should the EU legislators do or do better to protect media freedom? Yeah, um, this is a very complex question. So first of all, in general, the EU should use all possible means to strengthen and improve uh, media freedom and pluralism across, the Euro across Europe. So this includes using existing mechanisms such as referring countries to the Court of Justice of the EU, or urging implementation of existing directives or existing recommendations, working closely with stakeholders such as media industry, but also NGOs, so civil society, to support self and co-regulation 
and of course working closely to media outlets as well. Uh, but besides all these, so using the existing mechanisms, I see the opportunity to introduce new pieces of legislation as well. So in terms of this creating a new piece of legislation, now the EU has a golden opportunity to strengthen media freedom with the draft European Media Freedom Act that is on the table of the European Commission. If done properly, this law can ensure and create safeguards for media freedom and pluralism ac across Europe and also repair media market failures that has been, has been seen recently. So first, the European Media Freedom Act, to go into details what I think should regulate, should explicitly define the basic principles under which governments may grant state aid and state subsidies to media companies. So basically this is financing media. These principles should include political impartiality, transparency of funding, accountability, eligibility, feasibility. State aid and state subsidies are closely connected with public service broadcasting as well. So the European Media Freedom Act should lay out minimum standards for public service media organizational principles and also requirements for providing state funding to public service media. We have seen in many EU countries that financing public service media is very controversial and this is a way to turn public service media into a governmental propaganda machine in some of the EU countries. The European Media Freedom Act can also help ensure that media funds are distributed transparently and, fair, and in a fair manner. And that would really help local media, small and medium-sized investigative journalism centers and st startup to get proper financing. Of course, in case state subsidies and state aid are distributed in a proper manner. Um, to put it in another main baby, so governments cannot destroy the media market to finance their favorites when it's come to granting public funds. Uh, that means that if a media outlet reports on wrongdoing by public officials, they should not worry that it will affect their public fund financing, for example. So this is one, one thing that I find very important for the European Media Freedom Act to, to regulate. The second topic is the protection of journalists. So the proper implementation of the recommendation on the protection, safety and empowerment of journalists and related other EU legislation, such as the Whistleblower Directive, which protects the persons who report on lawbreaking and corruption, and new measures to protect journalists from strategic lawsuits against public participation would be very important. So this strategic lawsuits against public participation, this is how we, what we call SLAP, is uh, something which is abusive meritless lawsuits that intend only to silence journalists, but not only journalists, but also watchdog and other stakeholders uh, who would report or appear in the media. Uh, so the right for the journalists to work safely and without fear is inseparable from the concept of media freedom. And this is also true for the digital online media as well. So if we think about the Pegasus scandal, the online surveillance of journalists is one of the means to undercut critical reporting. So in 2021, the Pegasus project revealed that at least 180 journalists in 20 countries were targeted with Pegasus fiber used by governments. Uh, and journalists should be protected from being surveyed uh, because this is a high risk that journalists face and not only journalists, but also their sources. So this was our second topic. And the third topic, which I think would be crucial to not only sustain, but also improve the level of media protection in, uh, in the EU is the enforcement rules, because those are critical both at national and EU level. So the European Media Freedom Act should require that the appointment mechanism of members of national media regulators be democratic, 
independence from government and also from political parties and market players and be transparent. We see different problems in different EU member states. However, the need for independent national level um, enforcement bodies are crucial, uh, both at this very moment and also if we have a stronger uh, European Media Freedom Act. Um, I also strongly believe that we need a full-scale commission-led enforcement mechanism at the EU level. Uh, if you think about the data protection system, the GDPR, or you think about the Digital Services Act, um, there is a high chance that the Commission takes this role um, as important as it is and ensure that they balance against those countries where authoritarian governments capture their national media authorities. Uh, connecting to this, what we would also need, and this is my last point connected to this, we would need a publicly accessible European database of, of media ownership. So knowing who owns and who controls media and revealing the complex offshore companies behind media outlets and knowing who controls not only the media but also the public opinion and the public discourse, that's very important, ensuring media plurality accountability and also the independence of the media. I think that that last point is one that re resonates for everyone, which is that media is special. It, it's not just regulating any type of sector. It's a sector that informs people, al allows them to shape their opinion on things. And so it is so much more important to, to protect the freedom of that sector. Um, You've given a lot of, of tips, uh, let's say, to the EU uh, legislature on what they uh, could do uh, or, or where they could be better. Let's switch to a more negative uh, view of things, uh, which is our third question. And that is, um, what are the pitfalls that EU legislators should avoid when trying to protect the media and our freedoms? Yeah, to start with some... Uh... Uh, more general understanding before turning to the to the pitfall there are many <laughs> um, so so media so we have to always keep in mind that media is a necessary fundamental part of democracy in part because it facilitates public discussion and also political discourse it also allows people to exercise their rights to freedom of expression access to information and also form their opinions and therefore, disproportionate limitation on these freedoms are regarded as a sign of rule of law backsliding, suppressing public criticism and limiting access to public information are clear indications when governments start, you know, limiting the freedom of the media. So this is why I think there are certain things, and when I started at the beginning, so there are positive and negative obligation connected to media freedom. Um, so first of all, uh, what I believe that we need a strong European Media Freedom Act. The question is what we regulate under the European Media Freedom Act. So first of all, the EU must avoid using the European Media Freedom Act as a fig leaf and introducing a meaningless piece of legislation. This is something is a no-go. Uh, they must have the courage to introduce proper safeguards for, for media freedom and pluralism, uh, basically because this is connected our fundamental rights, and these rights are the backbone of the rule of law and democracy. So there will be several pushbacks from authoritarian EU governments, business entities, some publishers, media owners, either also including tech companies, and even national media authorities uh, when EU lawmakers start drafting a strong EMFA. But I still believe that this is something that has to, has to go through. And because this is the only way we can restore a plural and free media system where people are protected from, first of all, government propaganda, one-sided reporting, and also where journalists are protected and there is a public service media that are able to fulfill their, their true role. So this is an argument why we need a strong... Um, EU regulation on the media. 
However, uh, media legislation is a very unique balancing act where lawmakers should only intervene where it is justifiable. So public service broadcasting, protection of journalists, proper enforcement, these are areas to intervene, but there is also unjustifiable sort of regulation. For example, the content regulation is one of these. So the EU lawmakers should refrain from going into the trap, starting with content regulation, such as mandatory content screening or filtering online content with machines that could easily lead to censorship. Also, access to the plurality of media content should not mean that we create content regulations depending on sources. So even the most reliable media outlets can make mistakes, fuel disinformation, commit defamation, libel. So there is no exceptions for media. All the content should be treated equally and measured if something appears to happen. Uh, these, we shouldn't keep content in golden cages, but instead of going into content regulation, we should analyze and face the problem when there is something coming up on let that be a reliable media outlet or a blogger. But the solution is not media regulation, uh, content regulation, but rather media regulation from the aspect of the institutions, media authorities uh, and protection of journalists, basically. Uh, what I believe that the EU should also elaborate safeguards to ensure financially and politically independent media system, including public service broadcasting. So public service broadcasting is the only field where content regulation can be is justifiable to have very certain limits only, uh, but no other content should fall under the same kind of regulation. Uh, and why I say that, so the EU, the, the EU legislators, and this will be a very critical during the European Media Freedom uh, Act legislation that we have seen previously in some of the EU member states, Czech Republic, Slovenia, and we still see it in Hungary, on Poland, that there are direct political influence. There are shady financing system, non-transparent and uncontrolled media ownership, this source of media market and pluralism. Uh, and also politically influenced media authorities cause serious harms. And if it can happen in one country, or I already listed four, it could happen in other countries. So these safeguards, and this is a lesson to be learned. So we need safeguards and we need a higher level of enforcement to protect media freedom, not only at the national level, but take it as a European uh, context and also at the at the European level as well. Uh, therefore, the Commission, and this is also a pitfall to avoid, should start using the existing means and mechanisms, so launching investigation and referring cases to the Court of Justice is a must. And that would also send a strong signal to other governments where freedom of the media is not respected or not respected properly. So, so basically, it's not just about legislating, it's also about acting uh, with the existing legislation and, and enforcing the principles that are already there at the end of the day uh, at EU level, um, which um, you've quoted uh, four countries. I think we see more and more cases of uh, things that we thought would not happen in the EU somehow. And yet they are happening. Uh, so uh, that that amplifies, I think, your point about how important the MFA will be uh, for Europe and, and uh, the fact that it needs to be uh, a strong act, not a fig leaf, to quote you. Um, we, we have our, our big soapbox moment at the end uh, where um, you have the opportunity to talk to uh, two leading wom women in the EU, um, Ursula von der Leyen and Roberta Metzola, who are respectively president of the European Commission and president of the European Parliament. Um, 
this this is your moment where you can tell them what you want from them, what they should be doing. Um, you have two minutes and uh, I would say be convincing because uh, I think all of the arguments you listed are worth uh, defending. So let's hope they pick them up. So um, my message would be that um, the EU should create a strong European Media Freedom Act to correct the systemic errors in Europe's media landscape. It is the responsibility of EU legislators to ensure safeguards for free and pluralistic media in Europe. Uh, in the multilingual Europe, where media usage depends on age, language, education, it is of utmost importance to ensure that EU citizens are well informed, access to reliable, to reliable information. And we also must protect people from propaganda and ensure that free and diverse media exist in the EU. There are serious imbalances between member states. So protect uh, freedom and pluralism in the EU. We need minimum standards to ensure free and independent media from undue restrictions and independent media authorities at both national and EU levels from undue political and corporate intervention. Because this is what we had seen during data protection and the GDPR. So even having a strong piece of legislation and model uh, regulation, if enforcement is missing, then it's just uh, not enough. And uh, there are serious causes and problems would arrive. Therefore, I really urge EU legislators not only think about introducing a strong European Media Freedom Act, but also start from scratch thinking about what kind of enforcement mechanism we should um, attach to a new European Media Freedom Act. Um, the EU lawmakers provided with the Digital Services and Digital Market Acts that with a strong will, they could capture the systemic problems of the digital ecosystem. And media regulation also needs to be adjusted to the new and also old challenges and problems. So now the EU has the golden opportunity to strengthen media freedom with the draft European Media Freedom Act. And I really hope that with a successful stakeholder dialogue, we can create safeguards and higher level of media freedom and pluralism across the EU. Um, thank you, Eva. I hope they were listening. <laughs> they certainly seem thoughtful <laughs> during uh, your soapbox moment. Um, we know that the EMFA will come out um, in the fall after summer break. Uh, and I think once we know uh, more about it, uh, we might have a follow-up conversation to see if some of the things you listed were reflected uh, in that document, or if you still need to encourage EU legislators to be bolder and braver. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.